you say I have two years to complete these preparations. In cooperation with Count Heffering, of course. You and Hubert can finalize the details later. As I won't be choosing a Prime Minister for some time, I realize this may result in extra work for you. However, that also means more latitude to do things as you see fit, so long as you ensure we're prepared for a five-year war. I will not rest until I discover a solution, Your Highness. So long as our military leaders don't tread on my toes, I shouldn't have too much difficulty. Hmm. For something this big, you better believe we'll have plenty of need for resources. Leave it to a narrow-minded quill carrier like you to call that treading on your toes. In Her Majesty's name, I will decide what is and isn't appropriate regarding your needs. Also, anyone would seem narrow-minded when compared to a swollen-headed juggernaut such as yourself. A juggernaut, huh? Yeah, I like the sound of that. I see someone allowed his sarcasm lessons to lapse. Moving on. Lord Arendelle's followers will doubtless attempt to interfere, so we'll need to keep a close eye on them. Once Count Varley joins us, we can discuss the matter I mentioned further. It seems he's just arrived, Your Majesty. Apologies for my tardiness. Gregoire von Varley at the court service. My, but attendance seems light. Where is the Lord Regent and the rest of our noble six? Duke Iyer stands accused of treason and has been dismissed as Prime Minister. He currently awaits judgment in one of our finer dungeons. Lord Arendelle is a fugitive from the same crime and will be taken in soon. Dead or alive, it makes no difference. Well, this is a rather shocking turn of events. I had no idea Ludwig was capable of such things. Still, rest assured that I am nothing like him. Indeed. And as for the others, Duke Gert was dispatched to Western Fodman to conduct negotiations. And my father, the late Marquis Vestra, perished in the struggle to capture Duke Gaia. Which makes me the new Marquis Vestra. ...and Minister of the Imperial Household. Ah! You've nothing to fear, Count Farley. Her Majesty intends to bestow a great honor upon you. Majesty? Wait, you mean... The title hasn't been formalized just yet, but as it stands, you should view it as a foregone conclusion. More importantly, Count Varley, there is a very important position I wish for you to fill. I intend to rebuild the Southern Church, and who better to be the bishop than you, our Minister of Religious Affairs? I will make my case to the Archbishop personally. Thankfully, Lord Arundel and his men are no longer around to obstruct such a move. You would bestow such a position on me. Uh, make no mistake, it is a great honor, but are you certain? Very. Now then, your first duty in the role will be to oversee my coronation. Do not fail me, Bishop. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Are you enjoying your stay at the palace? more than I expected, though I do feel a bit out of place here. Understandable. Everyone here either is a noble themselves or serves one. However, that will change. As emperor, I plan to end discrimination based on social status. Everyone will have a chance to rise to the top, whether they are born into the aristocracy or not. No more nobles or commoners, huh? That does sound pretty great. I'll be impressed if you can actually pull it off. Oh, I will. But at the moment, I have a proposition for you.
Go on. We've successfully expunged the Prime Minister and the rest of that puppet government. But a certain amount of unrest is unavoidable. Which means I must remain here in the capital. In other words, I can't go back to Garrick Moth and continue my studies. What about the others? Our noble families will be in disarray as we transition to my system and new heads of household take power. Of course, some, like Dorothea, are not as affected as the other students. But all of them have offered to stay and help rather than return to the monastery without us. If you'd be willing to do the same, I'd like to offer you a top post in my new military. Now there's a tantalizing offer. It's not like you have any real obligation to the church. Plus, it sounds like quite the thrill. I'm more of a hired sword than an officer. Which is why you're perfect. Hubert wants to recruit mercenaries such as yourself and form a new unit. I can't put some noble in command of them. That would be ill-advised. But they would listen to a capable fighter such as you. You're Hubert's first and only choice. I, I don't know if I really have the experience for it. But if you have that much faith in me, I won't let you down. Having deposed Lord Arundel and Duke Iyer, Edelgard quickly arranges for her coronation, her eyes now fixed firmly on the monumental task laid out before her. All the while, the kingdom of Fargus is thrown into unrest over the right of succession. While the Leicester Alliance finds themselves pitted against an invading Almyran horde. Realizing the troubles of Fodlin will fall squarely on her young students' shoulders, Archbishop Rhea closes the Officers' Academy and permits her charges to return home. Scarlet Blaze. The struggle commences. It is the end of 1181. Two years have passed since the Officers' Academy closed its doors. Having ascended the throne of Adrestia, Edelgard has begun to enact sweeping change. The Holy Kingdom of Fargus now calls Dimitri its king, while Claude reigns over the Leicester Alliance. All three house leaders have found their wings as rulers of a new generation. With the whole of Fodlin still reeling from these rapid changes, Edelgard decides the time has come to usher in a new era. People of Fodlin, the Empire will stand by no longer. Together, we rise against a church that has become steeped in deception and corruption. The church has used their doctrine to deny you power and reshape Fodlin as they see fit. They thrust upon you the illusion of nobility in order to oppress who they choose, and they helped create the kingdom and alliance as a pretext for war. Finally, they teased you with the promise of salvation from pain they themselves inflicted, and did so in the name of their own prophet. Well, I say no more. The Empire has severed herself from their hypocrisy by restoring the Southern Church and nurturing her people's well-being. And today, we purge the world of their evil forever. We will retake Garigmoth from the Central Church and stamp out any nobles who abet its depravity. 
by my title as Emperor Edelgard von Pressfeld of Adrestia. I hereby declare war against the false church of Seros. The past two years have flown by in but the blink of an eye. And while they felt short, they were certainly eventful. The Empire has come far since we removed Arendel from power. We reformed the government, remedied our diplomatic troubles, and bolstered our military. And most significantly, we gave strength to the Southern Church, creating the perfect wedge against the Church of Seros. A shame our bishop has become the target of relentless censure as a result, but the Central Church even targeted him for assassination. Poor Count Varley. It could not have happened to a finer man. And then there's the matter of Lord Arendelle. What are he and his minions up to now? Slithering in the shadows of Fodlan, much as they have done for centuries. It will not be easy to drag such adept skulkers into the light. Perhaps not. Then for now, let's remain focused on the formidable adversary ahead. Did you call us here, Edelgard? It's good to see so many familiar faces. I did, and thank you for coming. This may be the first time I've seen all of you in the same room since the Officers' Academy closed. Likely, yes. We have all been rather busy marching down the separate paths life laid out for us. Or most of us have, anyway. Others, such as myself, managed to eschew work in favor of a more leisurely existence. Hey! I was working hard at staying in my room, but still... Father's been dreadfully busy, so he's never home. Which has been pretty nice, actually. I was returning home to Bridget. I finished my task, and now I have been returned here. Well enough. Now, as you know, the Empire will launch its attack on Garrig Mach in the coming days. Emperor Edelgard will lead the invasion personally, and wishes for those present to form the backbone of her army. And as it has been some time since Adrestia had an army under the direct command of the Emperor, I fear we currently lack for officers. I trust each of you, and can think of no candidates better suited for the job. Will you do this for me? So you've got other plans for my father's army, I take it? Well then count me in. I'm ready to go whenever. I would have been happy with a life serving you here in the capital. But if war is coming, I want to see it through myself. I'll go wherever you go, your majesty. I'm always ready. Plus, it's good to know I haven't been training this hard for nothing. I've high hopes for you, and trust you will prove the wisdom of my decision. Just you wait. I'm gonna hurdle clean over those high hopes and show you what I can really do. Be certain to save some of your hopes for me, because I most assuredly have what it takes to succeed. And with that... New Empire Army, move out! Ferdinand, kindly leave the commanding and naming to me. <laughs> that reminds me. Out. 
tiresome. <laughs> 